See in the night as though it is day, the T2 Pro Thermal made by Infrared, the hottest deal for the price, if I may. 400 paid and you'll be on your way, to hunt when you slay, on the ground lays your prey. For fun, let you play, moon not out, sky is gray, when envy cannot see, thermal is what I say. By NV, what I mean is a PVS-14, $4,000 from Steel Industries. Helmet mounted as you walk through the trees, able to navigate and do so hands-free. Stunned by the fun and high quality, it offers tactical ability. Which one is better? Let us, well, see. But first, I need you to see this video. <laughs> if your reaction is anything like mine, your jaw is just about on the floor right now. Naturally, after unboxing the Infrared T2 Pro and arranging the package contents to my desire, the first experiment I wanted to conduct was just to simply look at my dog for my first ever experience with a thermal imager. When I turned the camera on and saw this, I instantly knew that this product would be my favorite new toy and that my apprehension towards spending the measly $400 for it was in fact unwarranted. I eagerly awaited nightfall as a trip to the local woods was in order. I already had formed some initial impressions after unboxing the unit and using it in the house, but I knew that there were still some experiments to conduct and footage to capture before I could form a truly educated opinion. Seeing that footage of my dog instantly amplified my level of fascination with thermal, though. Somewhat to the contrary, I had long formed an opinion and had expectations before my first time using night vision. It's a purchase that at one point in my life I had thought would never come. Night vision to me was like the poster of a red Ferrari hanging on a kid's wall. It's the thing that I've wanted for as long as I can remember. While unboxing my night vision package, I was entering dangerous territory. I knew that I had paid the entry fee and would be getting a quality setup, but I had already formed such high expectations. Would this PVS-14 live up to those already high expectations, or would this purchase be one of the worst ones of my life, smacking me in the face with the hand of reality? There was a lot weighing on that pivotal first use, and... I was in love from the first second that I turned it on in the house, and I could not wait to use it at the local woods later that night. Did you catch that? Though the expectations were different between them, my immediate reaction to the cheap thermal was just about as joyful as with the expensive night vision, and that really says a lot. Both of these technologies had me ready for the sun to set as it had so many times before, but this time signifying a different and more important occurrence approaching. Using a specialized optic to see unlike I possibly could with my human eyes. A truly novel and powerful experience. These products individually hold their own in the areas of recreational, tactical, and preparedness uses which is right up my alley as well. These recreational, tactical, and preparedness similarities and differences, plus quite a few experiments and more, can either already be found demonstrated on this channel or will be in the future and in the form of dedicated standalone videos. Definitely check my previous uploads and subscribe for anticipated future releases. Also, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up, comment, share, and consider sending a financial contribution to paypal.me slash don't do daylight. Thank you to anybody who does that. I will give you one more similarity here between these two technologies though, and that is one which I was quite surprised to learn of. I have long been aware of how relatively delicate an analog night vision tube could be when it comes to light exposure. You have to be pretty careful when handling these night vision devices in order to avoid leaving permanent damage to your unit, and temporary damage is essentially inevitable if you actually get out and use them. I was under the impression that this was not the case with thermal, but apparently I was wrong in this front. Well, to a degree, if you may pardon the pun. Reading the warnings supplied with the Infrared T2 Pro leads me to believe that it certainly can be damaged by intense thermal signatures, similar to a night vision device being damaged by intense light sources. Come to think of it, during my research about the T2 Pro, I can recall seeing one person whose thermal image actually had permanent black areas in it similar to a damaged night vision tube. 
Now, I'm not saying that I feel the need to be as careful with my thermal as I am with my PVS-14. I'm just making mention of this because I was fully expecting thermal to have an edge over night vision in this regard, but I suppose that wasn't completely accurate as it is in fact possible to damage a thermal imager. Just put that thought in your back pocket. I don't mean to make a big deal out of that, I'm just describing my first experiences with these technologies and that really is the point of this video. It's not nearly all doom and gloom here at Don't Do Daylight. Let's now explore the thermal experience in further detail and hopefully answer some of your questions as well as compare it to what you may find with night vision. First, let's go back to the unboxing experience because I'd like to mention that I did not purchase the complete Infrared T2 Pro setup. It seems that these units get sold with a variety of kits available, and one of the more interesting accessories which I don't have is the rifle mount. Though the X-Infrared app does allow us to experiment with the crosshair functionality as you've surely seen in the background footage. If I was into air gun hunting and specifically pest control, this feature would be revolutionary. The tame recoil of an air gun coupled with the extreme affordability and adaptability slash usefulness of the T2 Pro would make for a no-brainer purchase, knowing that the device could easily be attached to my pest control weapon and have me protecting my property from little critters in complete darkness while having a fun time. Perhaps one day I'll even attempt this with a real rifle setup. I'll expand on this further though by mentioning how you don't really see this with night vision devices. The ability to have so many settings, get updates from the manufacturer, and have quite an elaborate heads up display is really not a thing with your average night vision device and keeping the T2 Pro's price point in mind, this is very cool. You'd either have to purchase a dedicated night vision scope which is only used on that weapon platform and serves essentially no other functionality, or mount your expensive night vision device behind your optic which comes with its own risks such as burning the image into your tube or damaging the device due to recoil depending on the platform. Hunting optics is one area where us night vision snobs really have to take a back seat to thermal in quite a few ways if we are being honest. One area where night vision is the obvious victor though is with navigation. In this video you'll see what walking looks like in somewhat dense woods with both thermal and night vision imagery and the differences are quite, well, staggering. If walking with a PVS-14 is considered a skill, then walking with a thermal such as the T2 Pro should be an Olympic sport. <laughs> First of all, the T2 Pro's lowest magnification is two times, and this isn't with a particularly massive field of view. Couple this with the obvious fact that the unit directly connects to your phone, which is where the image is displayed, and you have yourself a setup that may be awesome for static viewing, but doesn't serve much function while walking under normal conditions, not to mention stealthy or tactical applications where moving is required. During my experiences with the T2 Pro, I found myself using a dim red headlamp to walk a short distance, then transition to the thermal and pan around to see if there was anything of interest around me, such as an animal. As the background footage shows, this is quite effective, and if you know how to walk quietly in the woods, then this is even more true. Using a headlamp isn't even a huge negative when speaking of wildlife observation due to the ability for the headlamp to sometimes capture eye shine before you even notice it with the thermal. Speaking of the T2 Pro setup with your phone, I'd just like to mention that it really is an enjoyable experience. You don't have to use the included handle. The tiny imager itself could in theory just be carried in your pocket and plugged directly into your phone's charging port but I have had a great time with the handle and find it worthwhile for long duration comfort as well as protecting the screen from unwanted inputs and finger presses which would be inevitable if holding onto the phone while recording rather than having a handle to hold. Speaking of recording, the app does offer onboard recording, so what you're seeing isn't a screen capture from my phone or anything like that. This is the true footage straight from the device. That's just another awesome ability that you don't really get with night vision without making sacrifice such as paying a hefty cost and losing part of your image by mounting a camera to your housing. I do find it peculiar how the video files end up being displayed vertically in my phone's camera roll though. This is an easy fix in the editing process. Just rotate the image and you have what you see here. Now, back to our initial reaction after unboxing the T2 Pro and using it for the first time indoors. 
I'd like to first say that the unit is in fact able to be tripod mounted, so feel free to let your creativity run wild with that. You can also fairly easily and cheaply tripod mount your PVS-14, but this comes with its own risks such as burning an image into your device by leaving it in a fixed position for an extended amount of time. I have a video on this channel dedicated to the time I did that while filming. The T2 Pro simply has the tripod mount built into the phone mount where you would normally screw the handle into. Also, I find it pretty cool how the T2 Pro does not require charging or batteries. The device runs off of your phone battery, and to this point I'd like to mention that it really just sips battery life. All things considered, and in my experience. Another takeaway from initial testing is one point which I find to still be acceptable but not really preferred, and this is the fact that the T2 Pro does have the ability to record audio, but this is done through the unit itself. Audio check, infrared T2 Pro thermal imager, one, two, three. Infrared T2 Pro audio check, one, two, three. Onboard built-in audio, one, two, three. I was hoping that the audio would be recorded from the higher quality phone microphone, but this simply isn't the case. I do find this to be similar to recording the PVS-14 with the NVGR Mission Recorder from Brown Bear Industries. Now, the infrared material says that the app will record video in 3 minute clips, but thankfully this is not true. It wouldn't be the end of the world if it were the case, but I have recorded 30 plus minutes at a time, and the file ends up being the full recording rather than 10 3 minute clips. Also, the user interface and settings are intuitive and easy to navigate. This is very important because you may want to play around with them while actively capturing important footage. The entire setup as I have it is quite pocketable as well. It's worth re-emphasizing how incredibly compact the camera itself is, though the handle and phone mounts can be easily separated and stored in a cargo pocket, which is very nice to consider. Compared to a minimal PVS-14 recording setup, I'd say it's about the same. You can use a cheap PVS-14 phone adapter to record night vision footage with your phone, and this whole setup can still easily fit in a pocket, though it does take more getting used to because you'll have to learn the art of mounting your phone camera behind the PVS-14 while maintaining a good image. My last initial impression before using the thermal outside for the first time was with the manual focus. Similar to a PVS-14, you have to manually adjust your focus, and this is a feature that I quite prefer because you really can get a crisp image, though I'm happy to report that you don't need to constantly adjust the focus. I just set mine for a medium distance and everything from fairly close to fairly far away seemed to look great. Also, the lens cap that is installed on the thermal camera is worth keeping on there. I find it to serve as great protection while walking through thick brush and having the whole setup in hand, and I also took note that not once did it ever get in the way of my filming. So those were the main takeaways from within the first hour or so of owning the T2 Pro, but I now have had some experience with it outdoors and at night, which I'd like to go into a few points about. First, the unit has been reliable. I'm always skeptical of cheaper devices that require a phone connection to work, and this is especially true with iPhone as I believe many of these aftermarket items specialize in use with Android devices. Thankfully, this unit works flawlessly with the iPhone. It rapidly connects and stays connected for as long as I ask it to. Second, I found the hotspot tracking feature to be quite valuable when looking for wildlife. This is easily enabled or disabled when desired and simply puts a noticeable yet unobtrusive red indicator over the hottest area of the image, which would probably be an animal, but not always. This feature led me to seeing some animals quite possibly a few seconds before I would have noticed without the feature enabled. This actually reminds me of the S2 Underground video entitled Thermal Camouflage Part 1. I highly recommend watching this piece of content as well as S2 Underground in general. In that video, he talks about how, when wanting to avoid being seen by thermal, one factor to consider is operator oversight. Perhaps a thermal imager can see something, but if the operator isn't on the top of their game, they can easily overlook what the device is clearly displaying. This is another fascinating avenue to explore, and S2 Underground also has great content on night vision. 
One slightly dramatic takeaway which did occur to me while mere yards away from a deer was that the thermal camera's auto calibration, which does make a very faint yet audible sound, may be noticed by and possibly startle nearby animals that you are spying on. Now, this did not happen to me, but I would not say that it's impossible. If you've ever been in a situation where it's extremely quiet out in the woods, you know that even the smallest sound can become very obvious. Thankfully, this feature can be disabled in these settings fairly easily, and you can even still manually recalibrate with the press of a button when not in such a tense situation. One other important takeaway after my first night's experience was that the app does not record while actively zooming in and out. This isn't a huge deal, but after finding this discovery out, I recommend trying to find set magnifications and sticking with them unless absolutely necessary. This will avoid choppy footage, and honestly the image is quite clear at its normal 2 times magnification. The app allows for up to 15 times zoom, which is nice to have, but I don't see as being necessary very often, and the image quality is quite degraded at that point. My last takeaway from my first night with the T2 Pro was that the software does not record the video overlay function. The X Infrared app has a feature where it overlays what your phone camera sees over top of the thermal image and in some cases, such as filming silencer wrap testing footage at the shooting range, I think it would be very cool to have that camera overlay recorded with the thermal footage. I did find a workaround though, as the iPhone can easily screen record, and if you record through the iPhone itself, the image of both the thermal image and the camera overlay will be captured, and this is awesome. I do understand how the camera overlay feature is probably more for the professional user who is maybe a home inspector or someone like that who is just using the thermal as a tool around the house and just wants to see exactly what they're pointing at by overlaying the possibly clearer phone camera image momentarily over the thermal image, but I'd like to see that still captured during a recording. Ultimately, my friend, I am extremely pleased with the Infrared T2 Pro and its companion X Infrared app. I'm by no means replacing my night vision setup with it, but I will certainly bring it along and even use it on its own. Thermal is an amazing tool as a homeowner, it's a great preparedness item, it's useful for hunters, it has tactical applications, and it's just plain fun to experiment with and see the world in a new way. You'll find yourself getting out more at night and experiencing the world while others are asleep. With all of this in mind, I'd like to think of these devices as complementary to one another. That said, the price points are dramatically different, and if you're looking for an awesome specialized optic on a budget, then I can undoubtedly recommend the T2 Pro. Thank you very much, and again, please do stick around for more. Please share this video, and always remember, don't have a good day, have a good night.